So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Vaishali and entire organizing team for this opportunity. And I'm uh, really glad because I think need of the hour is really collaboration between the specialties to understand better and uh, to work better for our patients. So um, in next few minutes, we shall be talking about, you know, what is immunotherapeutic drugs. This is the, you know, fifth modality of care. And as we, uh, we all are aware by, uh, you know, by the media, the news, etc., that this is considered as last few decades biggest discovery. And uh, from, uh, you know, I will, in the, my subsequent slides, I will show how the history actually prevails. But, uh, uh, you know, this is one of the inventions which has really, really changed the life of mankind and uh, especially in oncology. Can you, so, uh, can you hear, Madam? Uh -huh. Okay. So am I audible now? Yeah, this is better. Thanks. Fine. Sure. Thank you. So I will begin with this movie, and I am a movie buff, I would say. And uh, you know, this is a movie, uh, The Elephant Man. Many of us must have uh, seen this movie. So uh, this movie was a critical and commercial success with eight Academy Award nominations. Forever imprisoned inside a hideous, deformed body, the unfortunate Victorian fairground attraction exhibit, John Marik. He was milked every, for every penny by the sadistic showman, Mr. Bites. The ridiculed and multiply disfigured Marik crosses paths with philanthropic physician Travis, who helped him in several ways. So cancer, once upon a time considered as a rare disease, now it's no longer rare, but still it is challenging. And we need, there is a lot of advancement which has happened, but a lot more to go. So from this uh, you know, background, we will see how, uh, how we will move uh, in this field and what happened to this movie also at the end. So in this overview, I will um, uh, you know, discuss a few milestones in immunotherapy with the poster children melanoma, uh, how the mechanism of action of these immunotherapeutics, the class or types, also a little bit about our TMH data and real world challenges. So immunotherapy is actually not a new thing. It is started way back from Coley's toxin. Uh, you know, a centuries ago when Dr. Coley, who was a surgeon, he, he tried to inject uh, toxin, the bacterial toxin into a patient's body, of, uh, which is again a patient of sarcoma, which is my, uh, another area of interest. And uh, he found that the sarcoma get cured. So this was the first evidence in the literature. From there, there's a long, long journey in between. There's a lot of nihilism, unacceptance, then acceptance, then modifications which happens generally in medicine or other field of science as well. And from there to 2018, where Dr. Jim Ellison and Dr. Honzo, who got Nobel Prize for discovering CTLA-4 and PD-1 receptors, which are the sinoquinone, essentially, they are the basis for immunotherapy in uh, you know, today's world. So we are, we are having our Immuno Oncology Society of India. Uh, I'm fortunate that I, with, along with our interest group, I could pioneer this in India. And we are trying to work hard to increase, uh, to bring more and more trials in India so that we can increase access of these life-saving drugs in country and also increase awareness. And we are also fortunate that these both Nobel laureates actually uh, were orators in subsequent meetings of our uh, you know, Immuno Oncology Society. So from there, there are, you know, uh, the, now, now the uh, therapies is advancing it with such a pace that we actually joke that while we are boarding the flight and while we are coming out, perhaps a new indication is already uh, in, the, in the place. So this is one of the therapies. This is not a panacea for all the cancers or all the systems, but yes, this is having a potential perhaps to cure because it works by our different mechanism of action, which is... Uh, you know, it's, it's actually provoking or evoking your host own immune system in a manner that it can take care of cancer in a manner as uh, the host or immune cells take care of infection, considering it as a foreign. So uh, I will give this poster uh, child example, melanoma, which is again um, cancer, which is close to my heart, and I treat this. Uh, we have also established a dedicated clinic in Tata Memorial Center so that we can actually give them uh, you know, world-class care. So in my very limited lifespan, limited uh, practice, uh, I have seen this, this disease epidemiology has actually changed due to particularly immunotherapy. So while I was a resident, it was a very nihilistic attitude. And uh, you know, around 10, 12 years back, when a melanoma, especially a metastatic disease, it comes into the clinic, it is essentially a death sentence. And patient used to make their will. But uh, with the advent of these immunotherapeutic drugs and first drug, Epilumab, which came from Dr. Ellison's effort, uh, now it has actually acquired 
uh, uh, a status which is very close to locally advanced breast cancer, which is my other area of interest. And uh, this is, uh, you know, essentially changing epidemiology with uh, these kind of drugs. And also we are having a chance to discuss for indefinite survival. When I say indefinite, it is 10 years or more, which uh, nobody could think, uh, you know, 10, 12 years back in this kind of deadly cancers. So immunotherapy is essentially the T cells kills the cancer cells. So this is the way, it, uh, very uh, in nutshell. This is this is how it happens. So we can do it by two uh, two ways. Either we have to turning the immune system on or blocking the inhibitors. So both ways we can do. I will not go into the detail because I think it is beyond the scope of today's talk. But when this happens, you know, uh, this is for the good part. They take care of uh, if I, uh, you know cancer cells or foreign cells, and they uh, make the defense system very strong. But when this happens, there are several side effects. So it can essentially affect every body system. There can be many, many autoimmune kind of phenomena, so which we have to really, uh, you know, titrate and make a balance that how much immune system is actually activating, and if it is beyond uh, certain limits, then we need to actually give immunosuppressants also, like steroid, which is our first defense, and so on and so forth. So many of the these, uh, you know, toxicity, they affect endocrine system also, which is of interest to you guys, but I will, I will take other, uh, you know, toxicity is more common because my dear friend uh, Vashali told me that uh, endocrine side effects is, is the domain of somebody else. But practically you can understand that it can affect every body system, uh, whichever we can think. So uh, this is the most common dermatology uh, related toxicity. So skin, there can be multiple kind of manifestations from very mild to severe Stevan Johnson kind of uh, picture. Uh, so rash is usually on the trunk and proximal limbs and rarely face. We have to be very, very vigilant and be uh, cautious. So essentially we should remember that the threshold is less. So if you detect in time and if you either hold or give steroids, be very, very watchful, then perhaps you can really control well in time and they are not given an opportunity to upgrade to grade three or four, then it is uh, you know very well managed. However, if we miss that window, and the side effects they reach to uh, severity of grade three four, then it is difficult. And uh, you know several uh, uh, several permutation combination needs to be tried, and uh, which are having effect uh, uh, various manner. So this is uh, you know another severe kind of toxicities. Uh, this is the one different manifestation of skin toxicity vitiligo. I would like to give emphasis because uh, this is especially in the skin cancers like melanoma when we see vitiligo. Although it is a side effect, but it is also a response indicator. So when we see vitiligo in a patient, patients are worried, but we are happy because it's not a typical uh, other, uh, other rash which needs interruption of treatment. If patient is developing a vitiligo, it is a sure shot sign that this patient of melanoma is responding. So, uh, you know, this is a very peculiar manner uh, this immune therapy works. Mm -hmm. So this is different kind of vitiligo which uh, we find, cosmetically disfiguring, but uh, good for the patient and disease. Diarrhea and colitis is another very important complication which happens. Uh, one rare complication, hypophysitis, which is uh, of interest to you guys as well. And it is although very, very rare, but it can be lethal. So we have to be very vigilant in the clinic to detect this, the, uh, the diagnosis. Usually the symptoms are very non-specific, very subtle. They come with some headache, some fatigue, which can be due to multitudes of other reasons as well, which are happening in these cancer patients and other manifestations, hypothyroidism, and uh, uh, they are developing, you know, uh, sugar control, which also become haywire, and in general fatigue and weakness, which is uh, which is a common phenomena in cancer and uh, you know treatment. So one has to be vigilant uh, and uh, send them for scans, etc., and appropriate treatment. Pneumonitis is again very important, especially uh, in lung cancer cases, this becomes important. You need to differentiate between uh, pneumonia due to any other infection versus due to immunotherapy. These are the various uh, grading manifestations. Again, in the interest of time, I will not go into the detail. So these are the various kind of mechanisms which works with, for effect as well as side effects. What to say to the patients? So I would say first, it, ha it is a multidisciplinary care system, especially for immunotherapy. We really need friends. We need friends from endocrine, we need friends from dermatology, we need friends from neurology, and so on and so forth. So put together everybody's expertise, we can do um, you know, best of the care for these patients. We have to say that immunotherapy causes inflammatory type reactions that can affect any organ that lasts from weeks to months. 
effects on hormones may be permanent even and require supplements. So patient must be aware beforehand that these can happen. Otherwise, when it happens suddenly, they are, they are in a denial state and it's very difficult to manage. You may also need steroid creams or to take steroid by mouth or other immunosuppressant drugs. Many patients are very reluctant when, whenever there's a steroid term comes because of the, you know, lot of hype and a uh, lot of truth also, but uh, uh, from uh, media and other systems. You may need, uh, so most side effects can be dealt with at home also if patient is really uh, well educated and it is an early stage. But uh, in our circumstances, especially uh, if there are general category patients, etc., we need to see them in clinics and appropriately explain. We, they daily need hand holding. So most common side effects with PDL1 therapy is rash, uh, tired, achy joints, a combination of epilumab and PD1 is diarrhea, inflammation of liver, rash. With this combination, this diarrhea can be really, really um, uh, difficult to treat. So one has to be very careful when patient come with first episode of diarrhea also. Be vigilant that whether it is immune related or it's a simple diarrhea. When do they happen? So generally they, they follow uh, or they respect the temporal sequence. Uh, the skin toxicity comes first, then gastrointestinal, hepatic, pulmonary, endocrine comes later, and renal and neurological even later. So generally, this is the temporal sequence, but again, as, you know, as we know, there is nothing absolute in this world, and where there is a rule, there are uh, breaks as well. So you think, you, you have to tune your mind this way, but you have to always be uh, ready for surprises. So, uh, this is uh, this uh, the other slide was for single agent, which is more commonly used. This is for doublet, so nevo plus ipilimumab, which are uh, CTLA4 and PD1 together block it. They can give, they can increase uh, the response, they can enhance and deepen the response. But when there is uh, you know uh, more effects, there can be more side effects also because again the immune system is shaken more vigorously. So we have to be worry about about the side effects. Also uh, uh, apart from the uh, side effects which are on August system, there is also side effects uh, which are uh, uh, on, your, uh, on your pocket. So it is there also associated with significant financial toxicity. So this is, a, this is a flow chart essentially how to, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can manage. So this is basically oncologist's uh, domain, so perhaps I will not go into the detail, but in general we have to hold, interrupt, give. Uh, try some low dose steroid, try some higher dose steroid. If it is not working, then we have to add some more immunosuppressant. Again, multidisciplinary care, your reflexes has to be very, very sharp. You don't have a window to lose time. This is again, uh, you know, flow chart for epilumab management, updates where we could find. Uh, one ensuring thing is that the proportion of patients with grade three, four toxicity with AP and NEVO combination, that decreases over time. So if you manage the toxicity part and go on giving these drugs, later on these, for, for subsequent cycles, they generally settles. So kind of your immune system get tuned, so which is one assuring thing. And this is from multiple trials, this data is coming. This is also time to resolution of the side effects, so they happen, they become uh, they reached to peak, then they started settling, so kind of your immune system become tuned, and then they, they, they go on working. Uh, what about if we require steroid or other form of immune suppression, does this affect the ultimate outcome? This is a very, very important question, and many times patients and caregivers are concerned. So now there's enough data that once it is already started, uh, immune system is already working, and for toxicity reasons, you need to hold or you need to give steroids, it doesn't ultimately affect the um, uh, outcomes. Uh, especially if the dose of steroid is not requiring more than 10 milligram per kilogram. So, uh, unnecessary we should not give, but where there is a need, we have to be judiciously giving such drugs. So, this is the same data. Uh, does stopping immunotherapy hurt patient outcomes? Sometimes there are so significant toxicity that we need to stop even after one cycle, two cycle, three cycle arbitrarily at any moment when there are significant grade three, four toxicities and they become life-threatening also at times. But very assuring, now there's long-term data for epilumab patient is more than 10 years data which is available and it has shown that immune system is one uh, uh, such a interviewing thing that it may get uh, evoked in a manner only after one cycle as well. So if the many of those patients who stop therapy uh, at one cycle, two cycle, or subsequent cycles, while the standard of care is, requires two years therapy, then also their response, uh, you know, once the immune system is active, their response keep on happening. So their ultimate outcomes are still much better than those patients who haven't received any immunotherapy. So perhaps in those patients, it is a precision care era. 
in perhaps in those patients, only that small dose of one cycle is enough. So we don't know which patient require what dose. These are the unanswered questions. But enough data to support that if we require to stop in between due to toxicity, uh, these patients still keep on uh, doing well. So this is the same uh, data for PFS and OS. Stopping treatment doesn't hamper outcome. Is it safe to restart immunotherapy with a very, very uh, you know, a cautious approach? But yes, we can start. Uh, both kind of data is available. They develop some kind of side effects or they manage it well. So we can restart if it is absolutely needed. Uh, risk of immune suppression, we know opportunistic infection. I will not go into the detail. So about autoimmunity, uh, again, it is important thing. The data is limited and we have to be very, very uh, uh, you know, careful while we are treating patients with, of autoimmune disorders. We can treat with immunotherapy, especially if they are controlled. They are on controlled medication, but under strict sup, you know, uh, supervision. Uh, otherwise, it can uh, lead to more side effects. Age, so age, age probably is only a number. If the physiological age is good, there is enough data that we can use these drugs in elderly patients as well. Uh, one uh, special word, this is from Tata Memorial, our own uh, patient, a very, very rare disease, melanotic schwannoma, which was essentially a data-free zone. And we first time use immunotherapy in this kind of cancer, and uh, along with radiation, and we achieved the longest survival in the world for this kind of rare cancer. And uh, this is published in BMJ. Uh, so, uh, I would say, uh, last word, uh, these drugs are important. You have seen this. They have changed the fate of certain diseases, and we are learning to tame the beat, beast. Uh, and uh, uh, for many cancers, we are in a learning phase, but they cause a lot of financial toxicity. So, we have to use, uh, in our circumstances, some other permutation combinations as well. So, that's what one of our uh, uh, effort from Immuno Oncology Society of India. So from 13 centers across India, more than 1,000 patients, we collected data that a short course therapy also could lead to uh, comparable survival to international standard. So it was the mean, uh, you know, the mean dose given was uh, four cycles uh, with varying numbers because again, for due to uh, logistic reasons, patient do not, uh, patient cannot afford when they are from, uh, you know, spending from their own pockets two years of therapies, which is somewhere or more than two crores of rupees. So, uh, with the caveat of being retrospective, this data shown that uh, this, uh, you know, short course immunotherapy was also comparable. Now, there's another data from our center which has shown that low dose therapy is also working well. So, perhaps we need to devise our own solutions. So, uh, this real world multicentric data suggests that, uh, you know, our patients are different than, uh, you know, other patients. Their body surface areas are different. Their pharmacogenomics is different. We need to develop some different, uh, you know, different kind of. Uh, scheduling and dosing for our patients to develop uh, to actually achieve the same benefit. There are some unanswered questions. Should patients stop after response? What are the long-term complications and preventive therapies for high-risk patients, etc.? Also, mechanistic studies for specific treatments, which uh, time will tell. Uh, we need our own solutions in low-middle-income countries, which I have just uh, discussed. So these are the key take takeaways, and we'll end with this that immunotherapeutic agents have a different mechanism of action than from chemotherapeutics, and uh, they have a different uh, you know, side effect profile also. To prevent side effects, select patient carefully, identify uh, disimmunity risk factors, perform baseline assessment, be very, very judicious, be very, very vigilant in the clinics. In case of adverse event, rule out other etiologies, uh, shake hands uh, with friends from different disciplines, and take their expertise also to manage your patients well to educate patients and caregivers on signs and symptoms of adverse event beforehand, in between, and all the time, and to report uh, whatever, you know, they are getting. So now, we, uh, last slide, uh, we'll move on to the elephant man again. So elephant man uh, escaped from that, uh, um, you know, jail kind of a premises, but later on again were caught, and was again uh, started having those kind of uh, humiliating experiences, however, later, uh, the sadistic showman's own son actually made him free, and he again uh, reunited with the philanthropic physician, Travis. But by the time it was quite late, and ultimately he succumbed to his illness. So this movie actually um, you know, really shake us and to think, could, it, could there be a better end? And similarly, uh, I always think that could there be a better end or better fate for these cancer patients? Yes, there are many things like immunotherapy, which is coming up. We have to be judiciously using them to have a better 
you know fate and better uh, you know course uh, for in their lifetimes so i would say that rare diseases are not uh, rare always at times this is all, only a misconception the forgotten uh, cancers and other diseases demands attention and precision care so when i say a rare uh, this com uh, this encompasses challenging also because in current era cancer is one of the very common diseases uh, there are a spectrum from rare to uh, common, but uh, but essentially cancer is a challenging disease. We need to uh, have newer things and newer knowledge, uh, always updating ourselves to uh, for the betterment of our patients. And um, with this, uh, I will acknowledge Immuno Oncology Society of India, which is making a lot of effort to streamline care in uh, this country and uh, to establish international collaborations and increase access. Uh, to of these drugs to uh, in our country and neighboring countries as well. So thank you very much. Uh, and with this, uh, I will um, uh, stop here. Thank you very much.